today we will be looking at the 20 mini games from the original Plants vs Zombies and rank them from worst to best. Keep in mind this will not include the limbo page as the levels are unofficial. With that said, let's get started. This mini game apparently exists to pay homage to the 2001 game Insane Aquarium, which was also developed by PopCap. Was this a needed addition to Plants vs Zombies? No. While I appreciate how different this mini game is to the others, it's still really tedious and one I don't have fun playing at all. If there's a gold medal for this minigame to win, it's the medal for <laughs> laziness. Zombie Nimble Zombie Quick is literally just a normal level but with double speed. There is no creativity to be found in this minigame at all. You'd have better luck finding a decent illumination movie than innovation from this level. <laughs> okay fine these two movies are good everything else is trash end of discussion why couldn't they just come up with a new mini game instead of recycling 3-5 again big trouble little zombie pits you up against the exact same roster of zombies as you thought when you played the level in story at least worn up bowling incorporated some new zombies to keep things interesting and as a mini game Big trouble, big trouble, little, big trouble, little zombie is super boring too. Considering we're halfway through the story at this point, our entire plant lineup consists of plants we unlocked right at the start of the game, and there is no difficulty here whatsoever. Just like Zombie Nimble, Zombie Quick, they changed one minor gimmick and revolved a whole level around it. This might be a controversial opinion, but. I've never really liked Big Old Twists. All I really find myself doing in this minigame is just spam clicking until I can find something that matches up. Because this minigame is just straight up confusing. Throughout the history of gaming, there have been some nasty achievements, but one of the most grueling achievements I've come across is Lucky Spin, which will essentially have you sitting on this level for hours until fortune decides to favour you. But is this level at least fun? Not really. Though it is an interesting concept to be fair. You spin a slot machine and use the prize spins to defend your lawn. As you save up sun to roll the machine, you're slowly building up your main stockpile to amass 2000 sun to win. Personally, if I was designing this mini game, I would have had a second slot machine with a more expensive spin cost, but with more powerful plants, then meaning we can see some interesting zombies instead of just buckethead spam. Now we're finally moving on to the somewhat interesting minigames. Portal Combat is really unique and the advanced zombies really help add to our challenge of portals. Yeah, take that PVZ2. PVZ1 was using portals before it was cool. Are you sure about that? But now it's time to address the elephant in the room. Portal Combat has a huge problem with the portal placements. It's completely possible for a portal to spawn right in front of the house, which to this day has never been fixed. I really don't buy the excuse. It's all part of the challenge. It's a fake difficulty with no reason to exist. Build a star shape out of star fruit. <laughs> Seeing stars is fine. It's not a particularly crazy minigame, but it doesn't really do anything too offensive either. I like to consider it as the benchmark point between the good and the bad, though Portal Combat would be ahead of this if it wasn't for the aforementioned problem. Did you know that PopCap were the creators of the iconic match free game Bejeweled? This game would go on to inspire hundreds of match free titles, from Candy Crush to Homescapes to Angry Birds Match. But before the clones came along, we had Begooled, which is obviously the Plants vs Zombies variant. I really like the idea of bringing this PopCap game into Plants vs Zombies, as now you have to make matches and defend the lawn from zombies at the same time. After collecting enough sun, you can buy upgrades to boost your plants. Too. While it was nice to see this in Plants vs Zombies 2, I really wish we could have pushed the boat out a little bit further with some of these subsequent minigames. Why is there three big old levels in modern day and big old blitz but no mention of so many other minigames? Who would even incorporate a big old level into a level per- I think in this case I'm going to make a graceful retreat. 
column like you see them duplicates everything you plant across all five rows. So with five times the plants, you can expect five times the zombies and that's when the fun really begins. This mini game is chaos and I love it for that reason. And quintuple jalapeno is just amazing. My one pet peeve I have about this mini game though is another doozy of an achievement, Chili Free, which requires you to win without using any jalapenos. I found this to be another luck based achievement based mainly on how many melon pulp the game decides to give you. What has been seen cannot be seen. What? Just missing the top 10, Invisigol is a night pool level with invisible zombies. But the plant selection is actually clever this time round, as Colonel Pult and Ice Room can be used to reveal zombie locations. But who exactly are our mysterious friends? <laughs> A really clever mix of zombies, considering the Zombonis leave ice trails for you to detect them, Dolphin Riders make a splash, and Jack in the Boxes? Well, let's just say, hearing his music and having no idea where he is, is pretty damn terrifying. To give credit where credit's due, Pogo Party is genuinely a really difficult mini game for casual players, even with the additional time to set up shop. Pogo zombies are ubiquitous, and you best believe they won't stop for anyone. I believe Pogo Party deserves top 10 because of just how challenging it is, really ramping up the difficulty on the mini games page. Bobsled Bonanza is our other challenging minigame, but I'd like Pogo Party without the obvious meta. Did you know that Chompers can actually eat Zombonies? <laughs> no! That's impossible! And did you know the wiki has over 40 solutions for beating this level? Anyway, I like Bobsled Bonanza a lot, even if it does drag on a bit. Now we're at the point where the minigames really start to get good. I'd be lying to say that this minigame is whack. <laughs> whack a zombie is less about tower defense and more about clicking as fast as you can to squash the zombies on the screen. And as a cookie clicker player, you could best say that I'm a natural at this kind of stuff. I like the way the zombies slowly speed up and how you've got bucket heads that can withstand several hits of the mallet. Additionally, giving you the grave buster has you juggling between keeping zombies in check and removing graves from the lawn simultaneously, so there's a lot to keep you occupied in this level. Here it is, the zombie boss himself, Dr. Zomboss. This boss fight is honestly one of my favourites due to just how challenging and well thought out the whole thing is. As the level progresses, you'll be dealing with almost every zombie in the game, from football zombies to zombonies to gargantuas, and you can only inflict damage on the boss when he's lowered his head for you. Pause! And if that's not enough for you, Zomboss spits out two different types of balls. Pause. And if that's still not enough for you, you can watch your plants getting smashed by an RV. <laughs> However, I do have one very small reason why Dr. Zomboss's revenge is only ranked at number 7. As fun as this boss fight is, it is technically just 5-10 copy pasted into the minigames tab. I've never really understood why they didn't just incorporate the mobile feature that lets you replay specific levels, as this would have created room for more minigames to be added onto the minigames page. I have always loved Walnut Bowling, and most certainly preferred this over the crappy bowling ball levels from Plants vs Zombies 2. It's such a simple idea, yet it has a lot of replay value, adding more zombies into the mix compared to the original 1-5. It's a memorable experience, and I truly wish it could have been brought back in its original form for Plants vs Zombies 2. No one can stop me from turning every coconut on this island into deadly explodonuts! <laughs> Walnut Bowling 2 gets ranked above Walnut Bowling 1, and why is that you may wonder? The zombies and the giant walnut of course, which completely obliterates an entire row of zombies. Fun fact, the giant walnut's programming even allows it to one shot Dr. Zomboss. Alright, we call it a draw. As much as I love Walnut Bowling, I will admit this particular level drags on a lot, and it definitely should have been cut down a bit. While there are four other minigames I would prioritise 
is playing over this one. Don't let it be said that I don't enjoy walled up bowling. This is still an amazing mini game concept and one which I truly love. The very first mini game on the mini games page, and what a fantastic idea this is. I am a big fan of the concept of Zombotany. The idea of having your own plants turn against you is such a clever idea, and I really wish that PopCap could have expanded on this idea and created a Zombotany puzzle pack. But naturally, with this mini game getting ranked in number 4, I think we both know what's getting put in number 3. Yeah, this one was obvious. More plants turned against you means more craziness and more difficulty to enjoy. I remember getting stuck on this level as a kid due to just how ruthless the zombie selection is this time round. You've got Gatling P zombies that can absolutely tear down your lanes of plants. The squash, which insta kills and moves faster than the football zombie. The tallnut, which almost has as much health as a gargantua. And the dreaded jalapeno zombie that can wipe out an entire row of your plants in one move. Yeah, this plant selection is brutal. You also have to consider that this is a pool level too. And trust me, my friend, if you thought that Zombotny zombies couldn't swim, you'd be dead wrong. Even a fat ass tall nut zombie can swim. A super fun challenge with no exploitable metas, just really intense gameplay as you deal with such powerful adversaries. Again, I really wish they could have expanded on this and turned it into a puzzle pack because this is a mini game series with a lot of potential. If you've ever wanted a sandbox mode to play around with some crazy strategies, then Last Stand is the game mode for you. Start with 5000 sun and build the ultimate setup to take down a large gathering of zombies. This is thankfully a mini game that was brought back into Plants vs Zombies 2 and I had a lot of fun building my own Last Stand levels in my puzzle pack. There's so many fun ideas to try out, though I personally think this mini game would be a bit better if the pool of zombies was random each time. And why could we not have Last Stand Endless on PC as well? Also, this minigame is a little easy compared to other games, but I still think the concept of Last Stand is fun and rightfully deserves the number two medal. And finally, at number one, we have It's Raining Seeds, and this is easily the most fun minigame in my opinion. Firstly, I love how each playthrough is completely different, as you can receive literally any plant in the game besides sun producers and upgrade plants, making for a spontaneous level that has you adapting to what they give you. There's a pretty mixed bag of zombies with different strengths and weaknesses too. It's Raining Seeds also lasts for four flags, but Unlike other minigames such as Bobsled Bonanza, this one feels a lot more justified. I really like the think on your feet style of gameplay that comes with this minigame, and my only wish for this level is that they added more zombies in, but besides that, this one is easily the top of the list. 